what he did for those events. <laughs> <laughs> he went and shaved. You know? Yeah, I like that. You guys hear that cashier kid at the grocery store? I, for, I forget what he was. He was chit-chatting me, and I, and I ended up saying, well, not, we're tourists. He said, well, what, what, what brings you to this town? This place sucks. <laughs> I caught two crappie today. I guess maybe, yeah. So what, um, how did you guys find out about Crank Creek and what, uh, you know, what spurred it, the interest of, you know, the, the McLeod Red Band trout? Uh, I don't know any one thing. I know, like, back in the 80s when we were in high school, we'd always go down to Roaring River. And I think through uh, kind of studying up, researching that, and then stumbling onto this, uh, which was much later, uh, which helped when the internet and stuff come along, which has sucked for the creek also. Yeah. Um, I think it's how I got into it, and then I really got into the history of it and trying to study research, figure out, you know, well, where did they come from and when did they get here and things of that nature and how did they get here. Right, right. And there's a lot of different information out there and you got to kind of try to piece it together and some of the pieces don't fit. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's been so many stories I've heard over the past you know, 35 years of, you know, it, it, it seems like it's a... Uh, you know, kind of almost a, a folk tale of sorts. Yeah, and they're sticking with the one that doesn't that, make any sense. That, can't, <laughs> that couldn't happen. Yeah, you know. All right, you're going whenever you're ready. All right. me a campfire, it's burning bright. I got my old dog, he's by my side. I got a cold beer, and it tastes just fine, but I wish you were with me tonight. The wind is so low, the weather's just right The neighbors aren't home They'll be gone for a while I'm gonna dance so free Not a care that's in sight But I wish You were with me tonight If you were with me tonight The moon shining bright I could show you that every, everything's alright If you were with me tonight For once in my life I could have Some peace of mind If you were with me tonight I've got a full tank Fresh oil change the engine's running great, we could be gone for days The weatherman said, there's no chance of rain But I wish you were with me tonight me tonight, the moon shining bright, I could show you that every, 
Everything's alright If you were with me tonight Once in my life I could have Some peace of mind If you were with me tonight I just got your letter It came just in time Says you've been better and you could use some sunshine Well come right on over and be by my side then at last You'd be with me tonight If you were with me tonight The moon shining bright I could show you that every Everything's alright. You were with me tonight. Once in my life, I could have some peace of mind. If you were with me tonight. With me tonight. With me tonight. With me tonight. Yeah, that's a beautiful stretch. Nothing. Where the fish is? I don't know, man. So, when did you guys, or how did you hear about Crane Creek? I first read about it in the Missouri Conservation. That's a reference. Right. Yeah, an article right. back in the. I don't remember if it was late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. I think it was called Hillbilly Trout. Oh, wow. Was that was the place. article in The Conservationist? That... Yeah. I don't remember who wrote it, but yeah. I read it and I was like, wow, well, that's pretty damn cool. like such a, a mystical you know magical place you know because uh, you know it's obviously you know trout don't reproduce in Missouri natural they're not, um, not uh, naturally from you know Missouri and you know for these fish to have survived for so many years and reproduce and, mm -hmm. you know it's just a and it's, it's a joy when you catch you know one that's you know this big because you, you look at it and you go, wow, the stream's working. The next generation. The stream's working. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's really cool. Yeah. That's a beautiful fish. So now, what is the, the story that you guys heard on how these fish got here? Story. The train story, yeah. Yeah, you know, I think that's where it all started. Right. The railroad car in the 1880s. Yeah. And they dumped them in. And then I've even read some different stories about that. Is that, well, the train broke down and they had to get rid of them. I heard that. Right. that. That was the first one I heard. Yeah. The the train was actually... Headed to the East Coast, yes. broke down, like, well, that ain't where this rail line goes. Yeah. They wouldn't have routed it through here anyway. Right. You know? But... Neither the people that write those stories don't know. They don't expect you to know. Yeah. And so it makes for good print. Oh yeah. Well, and once again, it's it's folklore. You know, it's uh, right. It gets embellished over the years, and you know, the more times people you know tell it, the the more they you know add you know spice oh, up here yeah. and there. And, yeah. You know, throw in that you know well. You know, Calvin Coolidge happened to be in the club car on that train. <laughs> right. And he said, you know. Let's dump the fish in this creek. Yeah. So well, how, how many more creeks in the Ozarks might they have tried the same thing that just didn't failed. take? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Why would they have only specifically yeah. targeted this creek? I bet they did it to other streams as well. Hmm. Well, actually, it. So to get back to the folklore part of it, so this happened in the 1880s, but this railroad didn't come through Crane until 1906. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a major gap. We got a gap there. Yeah. Yeah. That. So when I said that puzzle's not fitting, mm -hmm. well, there's your two major pieces right there mm -hmm. that don't fit. 
So, did stocking actually happen in this creek in the 1880s? If so, how did they get stocked? Because it wasn't by a rail car. Was it by wagon in the barrels coming how, overland? How, how would you do that, though? I mean... Well, that's what nobody knows yet that I know of. Yeah. I mean, with the technology available, how would you do that? It, the, the rail car makes sense because of the speed that they can right. get from there to here. Right. But if it wasn't here, it wasn't here. Yeah. So, so, so did really it happened. not happen at that time? Did it not happen until later? And then, you know, and, I, and I've also heard that um, it was stocked again by the MDC in the, sometime in the early 60s. Yeah. And that was the last stocking that it's, there was been. Yeah, that's, so periodically. The same line. Through. Yeah. Well, and, uh, not by railroad, but yeah. just by. Yeah. Genetically. Uh, the same line. You right. Well, yeah. trucks right. and, and things of that nature by that time. Well, if you brought them, unless you brought them from the same damn stream, right? And there which goes has been again. diluted. How yeah. has been diluted in on its own right? Right. Sure. It's, exactly. I mean, so well, how how pure is this stream? Right. And from what I understand, you know, this is the the last place that the McLeod one of River, one of the last places. Yeah. yeah. But even the McLeod River in in Northern California doesn't have this strain of trout. They're not pure anymore. Yeah. Well, I did find some interesting uh, reading today while we were here on, on Crane Creek at the Walnut Bend Lodge. So, um, this was a book that I stumbled across. Of, it's a James Fork of the White. And uh, this was written by Leland and Crystal Payton. And it's, it's pretty interesting because uh, it talks about Crane Creek. And um, I didn't bring my reading glasses with me, so I'm going to have to hold this out a little further. But, um, but it, it talks kind of about the, the, the folklore and everything, and I'll just read you a paragraph out of this. Some fly fishermen assert that since the introduction of trout into Crane Creek in the late 1800s, purity has been preserved by no further releases. Actually, no. Few streams have been studied as, as much as the 25 mile long Crane Creek and its tributary Spring Creek. Uh, Missouri Department of Conservation and Fisheries biologist Shane Bush summarized the stocking records of Crane Creek by saying this, you know, quote, Crane Creek was first stocked with rainbow trout in 1890 from the Neosho fish hatchery, and they were reported uh, that they were reproducing in 1893, so it was working. That's quick. Yeah, three years, and it's working. The fish raised at the Neosho hatchery were McLeod River strain rainbow trout. Okay, we all know that. Um, rainbow trout were stocked regularly in Crane Creek until 1937. Since then, the stocking uh, was only occasionally by private individuals. The stream was last stocked by the MDC in 1967 when they stocked 6,000 rainbow trout from the Neosho hatchery.
room. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for going. Yeah.